Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mount and Blade Bandalord and we're doing another troop armor guide. So this time we're doing it for the Empire faction. And we're going to be doing it just like we always do these videos. We're going to be just rating the troops in order from worst to best in the faction based on the actual weapons and armor that they have. Uh, primarily just focused on the total armor rating. So how good is the armor that they're wearing? Uh, so it'll follow just like all the other ones that I've done in the series and let's just dive on in get to it And so for today with the Imperial Troop Tree There are actually 10 top tier troops that we're gonna be taking a look at and starting us off at number 10 We have the veteran Elif Theory. I think is how you pronounce that or Elif the Roy I'm not sure but anyway, they are a minor uh, troop in the game They are a cavalry troop and there is only one set uh, and the set is the nomad fur cap the Woodland Fur Cloak, the Short Gambeson Over Tunic, the Studded Leather Vambraces, the Fur Rimmed Curved Boots, a Midlands Palfrey, the Corsair Lance, and the Calradic Mace. So as far as the stats for the suit of armor are concerned, we have a total weight of 12.07 kilograms, head armor of 7, arm armor of 14, torso armor of 22, and leg armor of 10, giving us an average armor rating of 13.25. So uh, on the whole, not the best armor in the game. In fact, pretty bad, uh, but... Like I said, it is a top tier. It just so happens to be a weirdly obscure uh, minor troop in the game. Uh, they can be effective, I guess. I, I don't have much positive to say about this troop. Uh, pretty low level stuff on the whole. As you can see, just regular clothing for the most part. Uh, and as far as our weapons are concerned, a lance and a mace. No shield, no throwing weapons, nothing else. And the horse is a Midlands Palfrey, which isn't all that special. And we have a light saddle equipped. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the exact saddle, because you can't really tell. Uh, but it is certainly not armored. So, uh, pretty mediocre unit overall, but it takes the number 10 spot for the Empire uh, Empire Troop Tree via the armor stat. So, next up at number 9, we have the Blaze, another minor troop from uh, one of the clans within the Empire. And so the loadout for this one, because there is only one, is the nasal helmet with mail, the neck guard with bronze plate pauldrons, the scholar robe, the male mittens, the male cavalier boots, and a broad arming sword. So the stats for the suit of armor are 11.47 for the total weight, head armor of 39, arm armor of 27, torso armor of 19, and leg armor of 14, giving us an average armor rating of 24.75. Shouldn't be too surprising that we don't have the best uh, suit of armor here for this troop because, well, for one thing, there's only one one weapon and it is the broad arming sword which is a pretty decent sword but we have three empty slots then that aren't being utilized in any way uh, the helmet is okay it's nothing special the shoulder armor is pretty good uh, for the torso armor we literally just have a robe so not a whole lot of armor protection there and then we have the male mittens and male cavalier boots which are both pretty solid armor pieces so the shoulder armor and the uh gloves and boots managed to bring this armor up to being much better than it would be without them but still pretty mediocre stuff and it takes the number nine spot for the empire so that's number nine let's move on to number eight all right then at number eight we have the imperial palatine guard and now this one only has one set and that set is the round kettle over mail the legionary mail the reinforced padded mittens the leather cavalier boots the step war bow the bodkin arrows and we have two quivers of those and then a spatha as far as the stats for the palatine guard are concerned. For this suit of armor, we have a total weight of 25.406 kilograms, head armor of 34, arm armor of 33, torso armor of 34, and leg armor of 24, giving us an average armor rating of 31.25. So a step up from the last two troops that we've looked at with the uh, Palatine Guard, but we do have a couple weak points, or Primarily just the one weak point, which is a lack of shoulder armor. That would bring this suit of armor up to a significantly higher level, uh, basically with any Imperial shoulder armor. That being said, it is a pretty good suit after that. We have a pretty good helmet, a solid enough torso armor, and some pretty good gloves and uh, mediocre boots. Uh, but then we have the Step War Bow, which is one of the best bows in the game. Two uh, quivers of Bodkin Arrows, and those Bodkin Arrows deal an excellent amount of damage, including some extra pierce because they are Bodkin Arrows, so they're 
good for going through armor. And then we do have a Spatha, so we can participate in melee combat. And of course, the two quivers of arrows doesn't hurt. So pretty solid loadout overall, just lacking a little bit in armor value because we don't have shoulder pieces. So that is number eight, the Imperial Palatine Guard. Let's move on to number seven. All right, for the number seven spot for the Imperial troops, we have the Puppeteer which is a interesting skirmisher slash infantry unit that comes from a minor faction of the Empire. And so there are two different loadouts, but the second one just uh, swaps out the uh, helmet for a weaker coif as well as the chest piece for a slightly uh, less good chest piece. So we're going to focus on set number one. Uh, and that set is made up of the iron nasal helm over coif, the infantryman mail vest, the reinforced padded mittens, the splint boots, three different bags of the broad bladed throwing knives, and the Fine Steel Paramarian. As far as the stats for the suit of armor are concerned, we have a total weight of 21.38 kilograms, head armor of 48, arm armor of 30, torso armor of 26, and leg armor of 34, giving us an average armor rating of 34.5. So, a interesting unit, this one. Uh, I really get a kick out of the fact that we have three different bags of throwing knives for this troop, which makes it just a weird unit. I guess they'd be fine inside a city for settling uh, intercity disputes, but they're not really that great on the open field. Again, we have a weakness, not having any shoulder armor, which brings our total armor value down, but the helmet is pretty solid, the torso piece is okay, and both the gloves and the boots work pretty dang well. And the fine steel paramarian is a pretty good sword. So overall, a pretty good suit of armor with a interesting weapon choice, but at least they use all four slots. So that is, like I said, number seven, the Puppeteer. Let's move on to number six. All right, and for the number six spot, we have the Imperial Sergeant Crossbowman, which has three different sets. And these sets essentially just change out the primary weapon. So we will be focusing on set number one. And that set is the Iron Round Kettle Over Mail, the Legionary Reinforced Studded Harness, the Infantryman Mail Vest, the Reinforced Padded Mittens, the Strapped Mail Chosses, the Hickory Crossbow, Heavy Quarrels, Fine Steel Paramarian, and the Reinforced Iron Rimmed Kite Shield. So as far as the stats are concerned for this suit of armor, we have a total weight of 28.91 kilograms, the head armor is 36, arm armor is 36, torso armor is 33, and leg armor is 35, giving us an average armor rating of 35. So on the whole, a pretty solid suit of armor here, not really any distinguishable weaknesses, pretty solid helmet, we have some shoulder armor, it's not the best, but it is. it does exist, so that helps. Uh, the infantryman mail vest is okay. The reinforced padded mittens and the strapped mail chosses are both pretty decent. Our weapon choice here, we have the hickory crossbow, which is not the best crossbow in the game, but it's pretty good. Uh, heavy corals are a solid bolt. Then the fine steel paramarian and the reinforced iron rimmed kite shield makes this a viable option for a troop that can be used as either a ranged unit or infantry or first ranged. And then once you run out of the relatively small amount of crossbow bolts, that being 18, you can then use them as infantry. So the Imperial Sergeant Crossbowman takes the number six spot. At number five, we have the Imperial Bucellari, which has three different sets. And so the three different sets really just have the difference of the helmet. So we're just going to focus on the first set. And that set is the plumed helmet, the neck guard with bronze plate pauldrons, the infantryman mail vest, the plated striped van braces, the mail cavalier boots, a Cantarian charger, the step recurve bow, two quivers of barbed arrows, and the Fine Steel Paramarian. So as far as the stats are concerned for the Imperial Bucellari armor, we have a total weight of 21.4 kilograms, head armor of 47, arm armor of 41, torso armor of 40, and leg armor of 24, giving us an average armor rating of 38. And so a pretty solid suit of armor overall. Really, we're just getting better up the list. Uh, no major weaknesses on this one. It's a little bit lighter than it has to be, but it works. Uh, the horse does not have very good armor, so we don't have a, a nice uh, barding for it, but it is a pretty solid horse in its own right. The male cavalier boots and plated striped van braces are are pretty good. The infantryman mail vest is okay. It could be a lot better. Uh, the neck guard with bronze plate pauldrons is pretty good. And of course, the plumed helmet is a pretty good helmet. Then of course, we have the step recurve bow, which is one of the best bows in the game, uh, followed up by two quivers of barbed arrows. Uh, not the best arrows in the game, uh, but they are still pretty decent. And it's good to have two quivers because uh, of course, then your archer can shoot for a long time. And of course, the fine steel paramarian is a solid enough uh, one-handed sword, and a great option for a cavalry skirmisher as a secondary weapon. So overall, pretty solid suit of armor and uh, well-deserving of the number five spot for the Empire. So let's move on to number four. So coming in at the number four spot on this list, we have the Triari. And this one has two different loadouts, and you'll see it's mostly, it's just the torso
also armor that changes. So we'll be focusing on set number one. And that set is the plumed helmet, the legionary cape, the luxury lamellar vest over leather, the lamellar plate gauntlets, the lamellar plate boots, the fine steel paramarion, the reinforced oaken kite shield, and the Pelum. And so as far as the stats for the suit of armor are concerned, we have a total weight of 35.19 kilograms, head armor of 47, arm armor of 33, torso armor of 49, and leg armor of 26, giving us an average armor rating of 38.75. And so overall, a very respectable suit of armor, one of, uh, one of the best looking ones as far as the Empire is concerned, and pretty well balanced on the whole. No major weaknesses, we have a pretty solid helmet, good shoulder armor, a pretty good, it definitely could be better, but it looks very cool for the torso armor, and then some of the best boots and gloves in the game. And of course, we have the Fine Steel Paramarion, which is a pretty good sword, paired with a solid uh, Oaken Kite Shield, and then the Pelum, which is can be used one-handed, two-handed, or thrown. All in all, a pretty dang effective uh, loadout. The only thing that could be changed to improve this loadout would be either adding a nice long pike to give us some anti-cavalry uh, defense, or uh, a two-handed weapon to make it effective as shock, infantry or possibly some more throwing weapons like uh, javelins. Uh, but with all that in mind, the Triari is a pretty dang good uh, troop, and it takes the number four spot, so let's move on to number three. All right, coming in at the number three spot, we have the Imperial Elite Manavliaton, which is the shock infantry for the Empire. Uh, this one only has the one set, and that set is the heavy nasal helm over leather, the decorated leather harness over mail, the luxury lamellar vest over leather, reinforced mail mittens, strapped mail chausses, the Manavlion, fine steel spatha, and the Pelum. As far as the stats for the suit of armor go, we have a total weight of 40.68 kilograms, head armor of 48, arm armor of 39, torso armor of 49, and a leg armor of 30, giving us an average armor rating of 41.5. So again, a very solid suit of armor and loadout overall. The helmet is quite good, one of the best in the game, as is the shoulder armor. Our torso armor is weaker than a lot of Imperial armor, but it looks very cool, and it does have pretty good stats. And then we have some of the best gloves and boots for the, uh, you know, mittens and chausses. As far as the weapons go, the Manavlion is a one-handed or two-handed polearm, which works quite well anti-cavalry. Uh, the Fine Steel Spatha is a pretty good one-handed sword, and the Pelum is a one-handed, two-handed, or thrown uh, polearm, which is also quite good. The only thing that would make this troop infinitely more useful, in my opinion, is a shield. If this troop had a shield that could be used with all three of these different weapons, it would be a significantly better infantry unit. That being said, the armor is pretty solid, and the weapons are good ones. So that is number three, the Imperial Elite Manavliaton. Let's move on to number two. And so the number two spot on our Imperial Troop Armor list, we have the Imperial Legionary. And now this one has three different loadouts. And what changes is the primary weapon. And so we're just going to focus on loadout number one. And so we have the Lord Helmet with metal strips, the Legionary Reinforced Studded Harness, the Cataphract Lamellar Armor, the Plated Striped Vam Braces, the Splint Boots, the Fine Steel Paramarion, the Fortified Kite Shield, and the Pelum. And so as far as the stats are concerned for the suit of armor, we have a total weight of 41.59 kilograms, a head armor of 47, arm armor of 42, torso armor of 55, and leg armor of 46, giving us an average armor rating of 47.5. So as far as the suit of armor is concerned, pretty dang good. Not a whole lot to compare, uh, complain about, and not many troops that can beat it considering it is the number five best suit of armor for all troops in the game. Uh, the helmet is excellent, one of the best helmets you can get. Uh, the shoulder armor is okay, it's good that it has it, uh, but it definitely could be a lot better. The cataphract lamellar armor is one of the best torso armors in the game. The plated striped van braces and the splint boots are both pretty dang good and again amongst the best in the game. The fine steel paramarion and the fortified kite shield are a good sword and shield combo and the pelum is an excellent versatile pole arm that can be used one-handed, two-handed, or thrown. The only thing that uh, I could say about the suit of armor other than that it could use a much better uh, shoulder armor is that we have an empty weapon slot that could be filled up with an anti-cavalry pole arm so something nice and long or maybe even some throwing weapons in addition to the Pelum. So other than that, very, very solid suit of armor and one of the best in the game, but it is the number two best in the Imperial Troop Tree. So let's move on to the number one best. 
And finally, at number one for the Empire, we have the Imperial Elite Cataphract, the Empire's uh, heavy shock cavalry. And so there is only one set of armor for this troop, and the loadout is as follows. The goggled cataphract helmet, the heavy lamellar pauldrons, the heavy scale armor over male hauberk, the decorated Imperial gauntlets, the decorated plate boots, a palmation warhorse, or noble mount I should say, a courser lance, the Knight's Kite Shield, and the Fine Steel Paramarian. As far as the stats for this suit of armor are concerned, we have a total weight of 40.32 kilograms, head armor of 52, arm armor of 45, torso armor of 74, and leg armor of 40, giving us an average armor rating of 52.75, and actually being the single best suit of armor that you can find on any recruitable troop anywhere in the game. So as far as this suit of armor goes, there's not really anything major to complain about. As I said, it takes the number one spot for both, the Imperial Troop Tree, and actually for all of the troops in the game. Uh, there are no other troops that have as comprehensive of armor as the Imperial Elite Cataphract. So, it's the number one for both of those. Uh, the Goggled Cataphract Helmet is one of the best helmets in the game. The heavily, Heavy Lamellar Pauldrons are some of the best pauldrons in the game. Heavy Scale Armor over Male Hauberk is one of the best torso armors in the game. And the Decorated Imperial Gauntlets and Boots follow that same path. Of course, the horse is quite good, and the cataphract scale barding is some of the best horse armor in the game. We have the Courser Lance, which is a really good spear, the Knight's Kite Shield, and the Fine Steel Paramarian, so again, really good armor and really good weapons. Really only one thing to complain about, I guess, and that would be that we have an empty slot that could be utilizing some throwing weapons or something. But that's it for the Imperial Elite Cataphract. And that is all we have for today uh, for the Empire. So as you can see, pretty solid armor on the whole. Uh, they actually all, uh, rank second overall for all the factions in the game as far as uh, the armor of their troops go, just behind Sturgia. So pretty solid armor overall for most troops in the Imperial Troop Tree. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, but that's all for today and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.